I know now. I know you. <laughs> Good, yeah, thank you. I'm over in Perth. Oh, lovely. How's the weather over in Perth? Is it better than here in Sydney? I'm not sure what it's doing in Sydney at the moment, but it's um it's been it's really lovely and a little bit cloudy. Tomorrow's going to be full sun. What's happening over there? It's the wettest Sydney since 1915. Oh. <laughs> it's pretty wet. <laughs> no, our our rain has definitely eased right off. We're not getting a lot now. I oh, suspect, that's good. I suspect we've got a really hot summer coming. Mm. No, that would be nice. Not too hot, though. Are you still getting flooding? Any yeah. Flooding? Yep. Yep. M- maybe not so much where I am, but uh, certainly um, more kind of our western, western New South Wales has been hit pretty badly. Mm-hmm. Hey, Murray. Hello. Greetings, all. How Sorry are you doing? My lateness. No, it's okay. It's all good. We've only had a few people RSVP for this one. We were a bit late to announce, but it's a good topic. WooCommerce. How are you doing, Murray? You all good? Oh, um, snowed under. So much work. But, um, yes, I thought I'd better, I better show up because I've been wanting to catch up and find out more about WooCommerce um, and what's new with it as well. With all the new stuff with e-commerce and all the new blocks and all the new integrations and everything like that, it's kind of mental. Yeah, there's um, a lot happening. Putting yeah. Pressure on. <laughs> Sorry? You're putting the pressure on, huh? Oh, well, I've been I've been playing around with um I was playing around with um what is it, Crocoblocks, um, what was it? Jet Woo Builder or whatever it was, and that's pretty insane. But I'm really interested just to see what Elementor is bringing to the party and even yeah, just I mean, I, was, I came back and had a look at that for another job that I was doing because um, they wanted to keep it really simple. And um, yep. I started just dragging all these blocks in with, um, I mean, with um, Elementor and just going, wow, this has come a long way. Um, you know, this is um, there, a lot of stuff that you pr- would have had to have used a lot of other plugins to achieve could be done inside WooCommerce. And I was, I was really surprised and happy about it, actually. So it was good to see that level of um, sort of, solid commitment um happening yeah totally it's been a long time waiting in the plans Mm. i mean just being able to configure just a couple of pages and not like the checkout page or the cart page is like frustrating you know so Mm -hmm. if you're going to put woocommerce blocks at least do them all (laughs) yeah yeah and i mean because the first one when they were like oh it's it's amazing you could do so much i'm thinking you've Mm. made it so i can change the colors yeah. Um, that's not much. <laughs> <laughs> nope. Yeah. Like the CSS would have done that anyway. Yeah. <laughs> well, I'm glad. I'm glad you're busy. It's good that people are busy just now. <sighs> okay. Shall we? I think we'll just dive in. Yep. I'll share my screen. I'll do a little bit of intro. Then I'm going to hand over to to Morris, uh, and he'll do the presentation for tonight. Uh, if you have any questions, pop them in the chat or wait until the end. We'll do like a live Q&A uh, as well. Just ask your questions. So let me just share my screen. I'll get the right one this time. Last time Zoom thought my screen one was actually my screen two. Oh, there we go. Now that's better. That looks nicer. Okay. Just open up all of the screens. Good. Okay. So October the 6th. Elementor Sydney, uh, we're talking about WooCommerce uh, tonight, um, obviously. Uh, and, uh, you know, we've just been talking about it there with <coughs> with, with Murray, that was a couple of new widgets now. Uh, you yeah, can actually pretty much skin most of the WooCommerce now directly from Elementor, which is nice. Uh, so Morris is going to be showing that today, uh, specifically the cart, the checkout, and the thank you page. Uh, so that's our general agenda. We tend to try and start uh, on time and do a little bit of welcome introduction inductions uh what's new and uh, then we spin off into the the topic end up with q a and we try to finish around about seven o'clock just so you can uh, get to get on with your evening stuff now uh, here are the organizers um so i'll go first i'm uh, i'm will brown uh, so one of the organizers here um i'm a wordpress developer uh, i'm an integrator so i work a lot with apis and and uh, uh, both wordpress together with lots of other systems 
Um, I've been uh, using WordPress since about 2003. Um, so when it was like version two, I think it was, I started using WordPress uh, for all my WordPress design for my website designs. Uh, so I've been using it for a fair lot of time now. Um, we don't have John today. He's uh, off on holidays. Uh, Julia is on holidays as well. And um, we've got Morris. I'm sure Morris will introduce himself. I'll just let you introduce yourself when you do your presentation, Morris. Sure. Uh, we do have a code of conduct. So you can find that on the elementor.com slash community and then code of conduct for that. Um, I'm not going to read it all out. Just uh, it basically uh, boils down to be respectful uh, for everyone. Uh, and just to let you know that these are recorded. Uh, the session is recorded and can be used for marketing and do that and stuff uh, from Elementor. Um, so I'm going to open the floor to you guys. Um, and you can introduce yourself if you want to, Murray and Lorna. Uh, let me know what you do um, and uh, how you use Elementor. And then we'll flip back over to the slides and let Morris um, do his stuff. So I'll just close these just now. Uh, so Murray, would you like to introduce yourself more and Lorna? Um, ooh, sure. Have I got my mic on? I do. Yep. Um, I'm Murray. I've been working with web since about 97. Um, started working with, uh, I mean, our WordPress in 2012, I think. Um, where before then I was doing my own stuff, wrote my own CMS in PHP, MySQL, all that kind of stuff. Um, moved on to WordPress because it was something that took care of a lot of the stuff that I no longer needed to look after. And then pretty much as web has got faster and faster and the demands have got more and more, I was looking for something to streamline it and someone said, look at these page builders. Um, so I I've, so I started working with um, Divi actually, um, probably about um, three years ago. Um, and um, I'll be honest, I thought it was horrible. And I thought that was the state of um, drag and drop builders because it was really just, I found it very flimsy and um, it's kind of, it was kind of like playing with clag. Um, and um, I was looking for something that was a little bit more friendly, like as what you were, as, as you were saying, Will, about um, APIs and everything like that. I mean, things where you could actually start playing with queries, SQL, um, could integrate PHP without having to hack stuff stupidly. And so I came across Elementor probably about, um, actually only about a year and a half ago. Um, well, I'd heard about it and I hadn't really jumped in and um, I, I finally managed to convince my boss um, who was using Divi and making me build websites in Divi. I said, um, can we please move on to Elementor and sort of suggested that if, I, if, he, if we didn't, I would have to look for another job. Um, that sort of um, made them jump on board and they got a license. And since then I've been pretty much trying to move all our sites over onto Elementor because I just find it so much more robust, um, you know, so much more friendly to, de to a developer edge. Um, and um, also because you've got all the really amazing integrations with, you know, all the new stuff with Figma and all that kind of stuff. So that's also really helpful as well. So it's got a great pipeline for, um, for dev, I mean, for dev and design. Fantastic. Thanks for sharing, Murray. Now, Lorna, do you want to give a little introduction about yourself? I'm probably like a lot of people. Um, I started my first, I've built my first website back in 1999. Um, and I just do it on a casual basis because I work full time otherwise. And like many people, I moved into WordPress. I uh, was using themes, then found page builders. And I had a bit of a chuckle then because I started with Divi as well. <laughs> um, and then I discovered Elementor and just fell in love with all of those features. But I did a lot of research into all the different types of page builders before I chose Elementor. Um, and I've just been using it ever since. Oh, great. Thanks for introducing yourself. Yeah, I used L I used Divi, um, not personally, but I had a few websites, client websites that used the Divi. Um, I remember at one point they changed their color scheme and it was all primary colors. And it's like, oh my goodness, that's not very friendly on your eye. And then um, I used Beaver Builder. So I used Beaver Builder for about a year. Um, and then Elementor came out and started to look good. So yeah, I shifted over to, to Elementor. So I think we've all had very similar journeys with, you know, trying to do stuff ourselves. And then I think for, for me, there's a turn of investment for of, uh, versus developing nice themes, you know, in PHP uh, versus the speed that you can actually develop stuff in a page builder. You know, there's got to be some 
level of in-between for me, you know, because I, mean, I love to develop templates. That's what I am. I'm a developer. But at the end of the day, if I can build a website in uh, six weeks as opposed to six months, <laughs> then, you know, it's, it's better business um, for me. So thanks for introducing yourselves. What I normally do is I normally do like an Elementor updates and let you know what's happening in the Elementor world, but actually nothing's really happening at all. So I'm just going to skip that slide. <laughs> I'll, I'll link the presentation up. You can have a look at the slides later on for those. Um, but I think we'll just uh, just go straight on to your presentation. Uh, Morris, if you're ready to go. Yep, let me share my screen and... And I think I'm ready to go. <clears throat> you can see that screen? Looks good. Okay, great. Uh, yeah, I'm Morris. Um, like Lorna said, I also have another full-time role, so doing development part or oh, website building part-time, but probably been doing it since the front page days. Um, also used Divi for a couple of years um, and then moved across to Elemental, yeah, probably three years ago, something like that. Um, so, yeah, I like to play around with it and have, have built a few WooCommerce websites and, um, yeah, WooCommerce and Elementor have grown over the recent past. Um, in the past, you couldn't really do much with it, as I think Murray was saying, so now there's quite a bit more. So let's go through. Um, before I get started, just to comment, we need to use the Elementor Pro version. The free version doesn't allow the WooCommerce widgets. Um, there are a few free plugins and paid plugins. I've got some of their names over here. Um, there's WooLentor, which is specifically Woo for Elementor. There's CrockerBlock. There's all sorts of things. Um, but um, Elementor Pro is what you need if you're going to use Elementor. Um, yeah, these are the, the two I mentioned there. Uh, some settings, you need to do all the basic settings, go into the WooCommerce. Um, and yeah, just put all your settings about your about your shop, taxes, currency, all of that sort of stuff. Um, I'll you got to set up your checkout settings. I've I've actually talked about a plugin that I'll come back to at the end, and uh, there's a plugin that's that's still useful. Um, set up your payment options and get into it. So this is a standard WooCommerce page, and I'll just probably just jump across to to the demo, a standard, a standard WooCommerce. So that was the WooCommerce um, cart. This is the standard um, checkout page and the standard thank you page. Um, so let's get into a bit of a demo. Um, so yeah, just got this basic website, not looking for any awards for, for design and things like that. Um, but if you go in, if we're going to, so the cart is empty at the moment, go home, let's just go and explore some gear. Let's go and buy some stuff quickly. Um, and uh, compute and all of this stuff to the cart, get a couple of those. And then we go and view our cart, which is, as I said, the standard, the standard WooCommerce cart. Um, so if I jump across into Elementor, uh, sorry, just before we get there, these are the plugins. So I've got Elementor, Elementor Pro, and WooCommerce basically. And I'll activate uh, that one's not needed. I'll activate this checkout one near the end so we can see what that does. Um, so now, if I go into my pages, um, and let's, skip, let's go and edit the cart. All right, so that's our standard page, uh, standard uh, original WooCommerce. As you said, all that we really could do was go and change a couple of colors there. Um, and click on them, go and change colors somewhere. Um, but, but that's about all. There wasn't much that you could do there. So the way it now works, um, so if we go down at the bottom, we'll see we've got a menu called WooCommerce. And you've got all these options. So we want the cart. So we're going to just drag across the cart into here. So it looks 
almost similar, but a little bit different. So now what I think I'll do for this session, and because there's only two or three of us, um, we, can, we can sort of work together, but um, you've got the option to change to one column or two columns. Um, I think that Will likes one column, I like two columns, um, but you've got the option to do either. If you've, if you've got two columns, you can make this one sticky so that as you scroll down, it won't, it won't disappear off the page. So that, that's useful. Um, you can have an offset so it starts becoming sticky at, a, at, uh, at however many pixels you put in. Uh, so we've got our order summary. Um, the update cart button, which is there. So you, again, you can go and change the words. I'm just going to put update carts or um, whatever, whatever you like. You can now change that. You couldn't change that. Um, you couldn't change that up in the old version, in the, in the original version. You can change your alignment. Um, so before we move to coupon, you've got the style. So, um, and you've got the style for each of these sections. So I might just continue with the order summary first, update. Um, so we've updated the cart. We've got the coupon, which is down here. Um, we can again change the wording of apply coupon, center it, whatever. Um, but you can also get rid of the coupon quite easily. And you probably could do that before. Um, totals, there's your cart totals over there. Again, you can format that. You've got the update button, proceed to checkout. You've got additional options. Do you want to update the cart automatically? So every time you add another product and you can customize emptying the cart. And I'm not going to do that for now. Um, but then you go into styles and this is where it gets good. Yes, you can change the colors, which you could do before, but you can do a bit more. Um, so you can do a bit of a background. Uh, let's maybe make it a light blue or something. Or let's find a better color. Um, so I'm just going to make it purple so it stands out so you can see we've actually made a change. Um, put a border around, get our, get our border width the typography, so now that's, so we can start styling it according to our, um, our branding, our branding the rest of the website, which you couldn't do before. Um, so titles, we can change the colors of our titles. Um, I might just get rid of this background because it's, it's annoying me if you don't mind. Um, maybe light gray or something, that's better. Uh, typography, so your titles, you can go and change the color of all your titles to your, to whatever your website colors are. So that I'm in the cart title, so we've changed that one over there. Uh, and do your spacing. Descriptions, so change your descriptions. Maybe make that a, a light red and that's um, I don't have descriptions showing, sorry. Um, I haven't got any descriptions on this page. But as you go through changing things, you, so this is linked because these are all links to the original products. Um, you can change that and you can do a hover color. The, the usual, the usual um, elemental sort of functionality. So we've got a hover color changes from blue to there. Uh, we can, I don't have radio buttons, but we could put our colors there. Uh, form, I don't have up at the moment, I don't, don't think. Um, yeah, so there's no form there. But, um, so we skip through that. Buttons, we've got our typography there. So you can see we've changed that button. Uh, you can use one of those one of those that we've set up already or or um, create a new style for that put a bit of a background uh, 
Hey, did you get the idea there anyway? Um, you got your certain color, you got your colors, etc. So you basically got the ability to, to edit anything, anything that you want to over there. Um, again, order summary, change your colors, make this. So this, this is changing the colors of the header here. So that's it. So your titles again, you've got you can change the um, the fonts and all the font settings. So do something so we can actually see the change. So that you've changed that over there. Again, you probably make cart titles the same font, just in line with your branding. Change the color, change the type photography of the items, so let's go and change that. So we've now changed these items over here. Topo again, typography, go and select. And if you've got any, one, any standard typographies that you've got in there, then you can use those through one of, one of these. Uh, product link, same story, we've been through dividers, these dividers, we can go and change. Um, the remove icon, which is that X there, to just change the color there. So we can change the color of that. Uh, so same story, we've got the, the totals, all these totals. Uh, maybe make them go back to my theme and get it a red color. We've changed all these titles over here. The dividers, I don't know that I've got a divider there. Uh, our checkout button, etc. cetera. Um, again, let's get, get back to your brand, you've got your border radiuses, etc. your padding, and then customize. So if you want to add anything else, so you want to order summary, we've got that already, but uh, coupon and totals, you can go in and yeah, it's got the total separate so you can find them easily. Customize the coupon, which we don't have showing, you can go and customize that. Uh, so you got full full options in. If I click update now, I'm going to have a look at this, and hopefully it'll load. And there's our new cart page. Um, there's our new cart with the new styling. We come back into here. We go into the advanced. Um, not too much yet. It's the usual. It's the usual um, advance for for uh, Elemental. So not too much specifically to the cart over here. So th this is basically where you're doing your start. So you basically can change your colors, your fonts, um, sizing, all of that sort of thing. Get your buttons according to what you want. So. If we go back to, to this and let's go and proceed to checkout. And this is the standard WooCommerce checkout page now. And very similar to the cart, there's, there's our, our product list and how you can make payment. And then let's build a WooCommerce checkout page. Um, Edit that with Elemental. And we go and go down to the bottom again. Go to WooCommerce and we're doing a checkout page. So we just grab the checkout. Um, one thing I didn't show you before, um, was the um, 
the the the, the um, let me go back to the list. Uh, the menu card. So if you add the menu card, what it's going to do is going to put the title, the subtitle for your order as you're going. So to wherever you wherever you want to put. It. I don't know that it will. Let's see what it'll do here if we put that there. You can see your subtitle as you're going. So as you're adding items, you, again, you can format this. And you click that, this comes up the side again, you can format that. Um, but, you, and you've got an, an option of what sort of, uh, so generally I wouldn't put it on the checkout page. I'd probably put it in the menu. So I'd have it almost right at the top here. So you can see what what your um, your your card title is, or put it on the card page. But just because I've passed that, I'll just show it to you up here. Um, you've got the ability to change the number, um, solid, yeah. Um, your card again, center it and alignment. Your icons. Um, Open, click, um, close card, all your options there. And additional, automatically open the card and update the card. So yeah, th that's just the, um, the card, so that widget. That was the menu card. So that, that I think that is useful to put in the menu. I generally would use that. But let me remove it for now. So on your checkout page, yeah, I generally wouldn't put it there. You've got your title there anyway. Um, with the ability to, to, to edit all these fields again, probably don't need to go through them, but um, we, can, we can go and format this according to our, our needs. Um, so typography, again, just get it into your the standard uh, the standard colors and and fonts so that's what's changed um, your descriptions change you have the ability to change the colors again I probably don't have descriptions showing messages so uh, yeah um I the message is not showing I think I closed it previously, but if there was some sort of a message, um, which is the WooCommerce message, like an advertising, you can go and edit that that font. Um, the checkboxes don't have any radio buttons. The link color, again, let's make that red. So that making the, these, uh, these links red. Forms the order summary. So yeah, you've got the ability to go and change all these items again to your, I've just changed that. Change the font for that. Title, titles and totals. So yeah, the ability to basically change anything you want. And there's the, the um, purchase button. Go and change that if you want to. And you probably need a background color for that. A hover color. So yeah, it's giving you a lot of ability to to edit to edit everything on your page. Um, and again, you've got the customize option here. Additional information, which is down here, I believe. Order summary, which is over here. This is the order summary. The coupon and the, then the payment details, down, which is down there. The ability to edit any of that, all of that. Order summary, get... Uh, Additional information, so which is down here somewhere. 
Um, the, all those, all these options I've given now. Uh, what did I change? Additional information, I, yeah. Maybe additional, maybe this is something else. Yeah, so yeah, the additional information is that section there. Topography, yeah, that didn't change for some reason. Maybe it'll change on the front end. Sometimes I have that issue that it doesn't change immediately for me. Uh, maybe it's my computer, I'm not sure. Make it a blue or something. Um, we'll see when we update it. And then let's go to have a look what it looks like on the front end. Uh, to the old one and uh, the new one, and you put all your details there. So, um, street address, 15th Street. And put all your details and place your order. So now if I jump back to this presentation, I've got rid of the original thank you, but this was the thank you from um, the standard WooCommerce thank you. It looked basically something like this, but now we've got the ability to go and edit this, this thank you. Now I've, I've put in the thank you page, um, which is basically a Okay, so I'll show you how that's done. But basically, now you can go and customize it. It looks a lot better. And there's your order details, all of that's editable. So that's another page. And that's my thank you page. And when you build the thank you page, um, Elemental will ask you, do you want to update your thank you page to, to the new one that you've just put in? So, um, and you obviously say yes. Again, this is normal elemental, go and change whatever you need to change. But when we come here, you've got payment details, bank details, all this sort of information. So again, you can go and change, change the words, you can, um, if you've got any downloads, I don't have downloads, purchase summary, um, etc. And then you can do the styling for, for these items as well. The bank details, for example. Um, make the direct color. So then, so we started to change things. So yeah, you've got the ability to edit any of these fields. And when you go and click update, um, so there, yes, everything's changed there. Um, just wanted to go back to to the um, to this page, the checkout page. Um, so you've got all these these fields here, which are now populated. Um, but if you and you've got a little bit of an ability to edit some of these fields. So if we go to exit that, um, if we go to appearance, 
Um, so you can see I'm using the hello theme, but customize. WooCommerce and check out. So you've got two or three fields that you can edit. Um, on this page, you can tell her where the privacy policy is, etc. in terms of conditions. Um, you don't want the company field or you do want it, etc. cetera. Um, however, if you want to edit something else or add something else in there, um, I find that this plugin is really useful still. Uh, check out check out field editor. So yeah, before I activated that, I'm not sure if you noticed. Um, under WooCommerce, so now we've got this checkout form. So that wasn't there before. So now you've got all of these items. These are standard fields. So if for some reason you don't want the phone number or you don't want any of that, you can disable them or remove them. Um, so it's theoretically, there's a lot less information now. Um, Billing color is one that I've added, so I'll just disable all of that. Um, then we come to just refresh this page. And theoretically, uh, let's go back to check out one page back um, to the cart. And hard. I've hidden a few. I'm not sure which. It's, they're not. I think I hid that. This was work. So let me just copy that and just go incognito. And then this was the message I was talking about. Um, and just say add something to the cart. Hmm. For some reason, let me see. I probably haven't activated something. I don't think you saved it, Morris, when you were in there. Uh, the save changes. <laughs> there it is. Thank you. And if I refresh there, uh, yeah, so we've, we've come down to just basic details. Um, so everything that I've asked for has been hidden. So that, that could be useful depending on what you actually want from your client or the, your customer. Um, but also you've got the ability to add a field. Um, so in fact, I added this billing color, billing Pet name, whatever. For some reason, maybe you're selling pet products. I don't know. Um, it's a label. And placeholder, probably nothing. Or just I can put that as a placeholder. No default, save and close. And then when you go to check out, let's hope that it's there this time. Uh, what's the name of your pet? So you can edit, you can add fields and things like add fields and subtract fields. And uh, when you place the order, whatever they type in here, whatever you type in here and you submit the order, place the order, uh, that will come through in the email to you to say the name of the pet is lucky. Um, so I, I find that that plugin is still useful uh, to edit the fields. Um, well, one more plugin maybe is not as useful as it used to be. Um, is the this one place order without payment? So yes, you have to set up a payment to in order to check out. So. Um, um, it, whether it's direct debit, cash on delivery, whatever, but maybe you just don't want any sort of payment, maybe a charity, I don't know, whatever. 
um, or you're sending out samples. With this this plugin, you don't have to actually uh, accept any form of payment. It will allow you to place the order without a payment option. Um, so I found that useful for one of the websites. Um, but in principle, I think that's what I had to show you. I hope that helped and showed you what you wanted to see. Try to use just the Elementor itself, not um, not any of the other plugins, Croco Blocks, etc. Thanks, yeah. Morris. That's really helpful. It's good to see that you can actually customize, you know, all of the the different components from the the checkout page, the cart page, and the thank you as well, without having to del delve into any other plugins or CSS or PHP templates, God forbid. <laughs> Yeah, <laughs> Murray had a, a question about um, be ordering some boxes. What boxes were you talking about there, Murray? You're on mute, Murray. There, I'm sorry. Um, yeah, you were, you were on the one of the cart pages, and when you were adding, you were ticking all the boxes to show up things like additional information and that kind of thing. I think that was my plugin, if I'm not mistaken. Was it this I mean, one? not that one, not that one. But when you were when you were actually creating the cart, and then um, we dragged on the cart, and there was a couple of check boxes went in the Elementor section, which said. Here's some additional things that could be part of this block. Ah, uh, okay. And um, what I wanted to know is, like, when you clicked on one and one appeared at the bottom, could I drag that? Could I actually click and drag that above? Kind of like you can you can arrange meta boxes on the um on the WordPress dashboard. Yeah, if I'm not mistaken, I better going to add something to my cart again. Um, I think that is ju just the order of that was just. To give you extra fields to to um, to to format, um, I think I don't think you can move it around on the cart on the cart page itself. Let me see if I can add something. Um, I mean that's fine. You could probably just use um you could probably just use CSS Grid or something like that if you wanted to just reshuffle things around or Flexbox. But um, yeah, because I just thought there'd be, there'd be it'd be interesting. Um, to be able to move the box around if you needed to. Yeah, I don't think you can do list. Um, well, if uh, you know, I don't think you can can move anything on Lorna or Jonas. Um, I don't think you can move things around. Let me hope that that's come through now. Okay. Uh, check out edit of element. And see if there's some things in my cart now. Um, Just like that red box there that appeared underneath, can you drag that above the box above it? Yeah, so, yeah, you see it's all within the same. Right. Okay, that answers it. All right, great. Thank you. Yeah, you move one, it moves it all. Yep. Yeah, it looks like it. That, that would just be a CSS grid job or something like that. That'd be pretty strong or, or a flex box. Just, yeah, that's hopefully when they do flex box, they'll rewrite these elements so they're completely compatible with flex box. And mm -hmm. that would give you the ability to move them within that container. Yeah. Yeah, or if they did grid like oxygen does, that you need to have a grid editor like oxygen, that'd be awesome. And I see here's my notices that you can edit. You can edit this one. This one you can move wherever you want it. Yeah. But, uh, no, that's fine. That's fine. I mean, it's it's all there. So I, I guess I just I saw the block and I probably should have realized you dragged it on as well and blocked, but I didn't know whether it was a block that you could then reshuffle the inner blocks. That's cool. It'd be a good feature to have, I mm. think. Um, I might pass that on to the developers and get it on their wish list. Yeah, definitely. Um, 
So as as Morris was saying, I, I prefer the one single column because that is as like things neat and tidy. Um, but having the sticky things is quite useful. Yeah. Um, as far as branding, so Morris was showing you that you can obviously rebrand all those different elements now to whatever you want. So you don't have to just rely on the WooCommerce purple branding coming through. Um, I think you should be able to click on um, the elements, uh, a right-hand click, and it comes up with like copy style. Yeah. There we go. So it, once you've got one block set up, you can copy the style and then just paste it onto the others, and that should reflect the, the brand all the way through the others. You don't have to sit and, and do all the, the titles, all the, those different colors. So that should be a quick. Yeah. So if I just showed you that, so if I go into so this one, change that <coughs> typography um, from just let's go for a totally different color so we can see it so that's that purple uh, okay so that's done both of them there um so that's heading secondary descriptions that don't have messages yeah but but so I've got that. So if I copy that and we paste it, say, down here. Yeah. Um, yeah. All right, yeah, uh, it doesn't seem to, yeah, and then that's what it's doing. Yep, I, th I think it's more for the individual element to elements. Yeah. So once you've got your checkout done, um, you can copy the style and then maybe go into your thank you page and yeah. then paste the styles there and all the titles should should line up with the same. So it should, uh, it should make that a little bit quicker, <laughs> which is always good. And I love the um, checkout field editor. I use that quite a bit on client sites as well because there's always people who say oh you kind of have this extra field that's going to collect this strange bizarre information so i'm like yep you can do that <laughs> if that's what you want here's a plugin to do that do you use that same plugin or yep one? yep yep i use that one okay it's really really good um you know and allows people to to build their own forms as well rather than come back to the developer or the designer which is, is always a, a plus a bonus I just have a question. Yeah. Um, and it's just that um, I've done a shop just once with when I was working with Divi, which it feels like a couple of years ago. And the shop's been, looks great and it's been functioning really well. But um, so I haven't set one up with Elementor. And I feel like I need a bit of a, a refresher to go through about, you know, setting it all up from scratch. You know, all that. All, so even before you get to the styling, you know, just setting up all those technical elements. Um, so is there, what would you is there a, um, a video that you can suggest that would be helpful just for me to to do a refresher that's either been produced by Elementor or somebody else? So, uh, well, a couple of things. Um, when you install the plugin itself, it re it creates all these pages for you straight away. So uh, a lot of it's there. Uh, Will did a session. I think it was uh, one of these sessions. So if you search on uh, the Sydney. Sydney um, Elemental Facebook page, you'll find World Session on, on WooCommerce. Um, I've just copied a link. And you've copied a link. In oh, there. So I've got a WooCommerce basics. So it goes through setting up WooCommerce um, from scratch. Great. Fantastic. So that just covers, you know, installing, setting up your pages, uh, doing shipping zones, payment gateways, just uh, things like that. So and that should cover the, the basics for you. Yeah. I just remember it was fun and games setting it all up because there were different products, different weights, different shipping rates. So it's just, yeah, there's all these different variables that you've got to set up. So it makes it quite interesting. The shipping. The hardest part, yeah. Yeah, shipping's the hardest part of setting up any any um, e-commerce store, especially if you've got products that vary by weight and dimension. And then you've got, you know, different postal 
um, cutoffs for you know payments and it, yeah, it's just it gets really really complicated. And well, to me, I yeah, the world's got his that the link there, but um, also a bit of trial and error. Um, try something and see what happens. Yep. So when you're doing trials, um, make sure that you put your shop into sandbox mode. Um, so with PayPal, if you're using PayPal or if you're using Stripe or any other payment gateway, there should be an option there to use what's called a sandbox. Uh, and then you can use uh, test cards. So for example, Stripe, uh, you can put Stripe into its uh, sandbox mode. And then on the Stripe website, you can download some test cards, like test Visa cards, test MasterCards, um, and then put in those dummy uh, card names and it will go through the whole process, you know, and, and you can see on the dashboard, the transaction that comes through and it'll send you emails and stuff, but of course it doesn't take any, any payments. But I also always suggest that when whenever you launch your WooCommerce website, the first thing you should do is actually to make a purchase because you being an owner, you know, you can always refund yourself um, for that. Uh, you know, so put through an actual order uh, and just make sure everything works, works properly the first time around because there's nothing more embarrassing than launching a shop, asking people to come and visit, and then it doesn't work. So <laughs> just make sure it works mm -hmm. and refund yourself. And I, I see that for my clients as well. When, when they launch their website, I said, you know, make, make two or three purchases yourself and, and refund yourself just to make sure that, you know, you've, uh, that the stuff goes through and, that, you know, you know the process, what's going to happen, what notifications you're going to get, how you're going to respond to them as well. Equally as important as doing the shop design. I, I remember the sandbox now that you've mentioned it. <laughs> <laughs> going through all that. Yeah. Um, hi, guys. I got a question. Um, I don't know if it's beyond the scope of this uh, webinar, but uh, maybe you can tell me about your experience with uh, Elementor and WooCommerce overall. Would you re recommend using Elementor with WooCommerce? Because uh, I've heard some voices who have been highly uh, critical of uh, Elementor and WooCommerce in this combination because of many bugs. Yep, it's a good question, a valid question. Um, look, there's a lot of people who post on the Elementor Facebook groups about errors and stuff, um, and that's fairly common whenever a new version comes out. Um, usually you'll find it's because they have like a billion plugins um, installed and you're going to get some sort of conflict. Uh, but the developers, uh, the core developers, um, you know, as one of the Elementor ambassadors, I've got access to the, the Slack group, so all the developers are on there. And I can see the testing that they do. So every version that they release, they test it against uh, Elementor, they test it against uh, WordPress core, the current version, they test it against the big um, plugins like WooCommerce, you know, and, um, you know, they, they do as much testing as they can, but they can't do every single edge testing. You know, if you've got some um, plugin that you, you bought three years ago for Code Canyon, you know, it hasn't been updated and, and suddenly your know, website doesn't work, then, you know, people will jump on the, on the Facebook groups and complain about that. Um, and having to, you know, uh, reverse back and it's a bug. Um, there was one just recently where someone posted um, that they upgraded to Elementor and it had a WooCommerce website and they got this error message uh, and how they're really um, angry about this uh, upgrade and they had to roll it all the way back. Uh, they posted the error message and it was a PHP memory allocation. So it was nothing to do with uh, the Elementor. It's more to do with their environment. Um, so they, they do a lot of testing. Um, I think Elementor works really well with WooCommerce, especially with this current release of, uh, of Elements. You can now uh, customize all the different aspects. So before, when they first re released Elementor, you could only style a couple of things um, and you couldn't change a lot of the actual elements within the form. Uh, so now you can basically customize the entire WooCommerce checkout uh, and cart and thank you process. And uh, so I think they, they bind really well together. And personally, uh, I've never had any problem with um with uh, using the WooCommerce uh, with the Elementor widgets. Oh, okay, thank you. Because I'm about to set up a shop and I was uh, wondering if it's possible to make it, but uh, thank you for your answer. No worries. Morris, you got any other thing to add? No, no that, that's exactly what it is. I've had one or two shops running for a couple of years and haven't really had any issues. Mm. The only issue I had was unrelated to WooCommerce or Elementor to some network issue. 
Uh, great question, Jonas. Thank you for that. Okay, if um, no one's... Yep. Yeah, maybe I got a follow-up question um, about performance. Um, would you recommend um, closing environment? You, you recommend setting up a shop? Uh, has it to be a dedicated server or something? Or a standard hosting package will do it? Morris, do you want to take that one or? You go ahead. Okay. Um, yeah. So this kind of goes back to what you're going to do with the website. And it's not really WooCommerce specific. It's more traffic. Um, but if you're, if you're looking at things like WooCommerce, then you've got to figure out, um, you know, uh, how much data is on the page. So your product pages, you know, how much images you've got on that. What's the weight of the page? Uh, how many uh, users, how many concurrent users are going to be visiting that, that website at that time? Um, um, and then you've got to have a look at your server spec. So, for example, you know, if you've got like a, a product that's got um, 20 high res images, that's going to be quite a big page load. Uh, if you've got uh, five concurrent visitors looking at that page, that's not so bad. But just say you're, you're trying to do some sort of promotional work and that jumps to a thousand then you've got like a thousand times, you know, whatever the page size is, five meg um, for those. Uh, so now you've got like five gigabytes worth of information trying to be concurrently displayed at once. Um, so it's really about metrics when you're thinking about specifying um, a WooCommerce uh, web server. You've got to think about, you know, the number of users, um, the, the weight of the pages, uh, the number and um, the concurrent number of users as well. So how many people are doing it? Uh, then you've got to think about things like your, your checkout. So when you're doing your checkout, when you add into cart, doing your checkout, that uses a lot of stuff in the background. There's a process called um, uh, admin Ajax. And what that does is it sends information to and from the server behind the scenes without a page refresh. Um, and that that is actually, that takes um, each one of those um, requests, takes up um, a PHP worker thread. So if you've got a couple of people on your WooCommerce website, um, that's no problem. But again, if you've got 50, 100, 1,000 people all doing checkouts at the same time, then all those requests build up um, for those. So you've got to kind of know those stats. And then you can maybe try and work out what sort of um, a, a, what sort of setup that you need. You know, so if you've got like a, a 100 requests, admin requests, a, you know, that's been generated concurrently, then you're going to need to have a hosting system that allows you to have a, a fair number of PHP thread workers. And that's going to require you to have quite a lot of CPU and RAM. So it's really about scaling, about um, you know, about your concurrent users, the number of users, and the data page load, and the WP um, admin AJAX that's happening in the, the background. Um, so it's all different for every every people, uh, every every store that you set up. It's going to be a little bit different, but that's the soft metrics that you should be looking at. So look at your Google Analytics, look at your traffic, look at your promotions. What are you trying to do? What are your goals? You know, how many um, sales are you looking to achieve per hour, per day, per month, you know, and try and multiply that by the page length and have a look at all the different requests um, that are happening. And that should allow you to build up a rough idea as to what sort of specs um, you're looking for for your shop. But if I can just dial back, doing it generally, if you're just setting up a little shop with a handful of products, with a few users that are going to purchase one or two things, you know, maybe every week, then you should be fine on um, a shared hosting like uh, SiteGround. Um, for those, if you've got 100, 1,000 products, you're looking for multiple hundreds of sales per hour or day, then you should be looking at a, a VPS setup um, or even some sort of cloud system with like load balancers that can spin up and spin down different instances. Um, and that allows you to level out the playing field, especially if you're doing um, uh, promotional spikes, you know, if you're doing uh, winter stuff or Black Friday, Cyber Monday where you're going from maybe 10 users to like 100,000 users, you're going to need that that scale to, to be able to spin up quickly without you having to intervene and add CPUs and, and stuff like that. Oh, okay, thank you. Thank you very much for your answer. So <laughs> no the, the, the answer is, probably, is it depends <laughs> in, in general. Yeah. Depends on your uh, setup, depends on your traffic, yeah. Yeah, okay, thank you. No problem. Okay, well, if no one's got any other questions, I think we will um, call it an evening. Uh, so I want to thank Morris uh, to going through all those different elements uh, for those. Uh, thanks for um, Lorna, Murray, RK, I see you there, and Jonas as well, um, for your questions and your input. 
next week, next month, actually, I've lost my slides. Where is it? Uh, right. Next month, uh, I'm going to be talking about debugging. So a, a WordPress beginner's guide to debugging WordPress. So if you ever find yourself in, um, you know, you get the white screen of death or something's not working properly, then I'm going to go through different steps that will allow you to uh, figure out roughly what's happening. Thanks, Morris. Yep. So a beginner's guide to debugging. Uh, WordPress. It's really useful to know, you know, if something goes wrong, how to uh, figure out roughly what's happening uh, yourself rather than, you know, having to go to uh, a developer or designer and pay their money to, to do that. So uh, join us next month. That's uh, November the 3rd, 6 p.m., the last, uh, the first Thursday on every month. Uh, and that's probably going to be our last Elementor meetup for the year. Um, we'll talk with the organizers, see if, if they're willing to do a December one. It's, we probably do tools down in November, but we'll just we'll just see. So it's probably the last one um, of the year. I don't think we've got a December one scheduled. Um, maybe we do. Um, but thanks very much for everyone for coming. Um, thank you for your questions. Uh, take care. And if you've got any other questions, pop them in the the Facebook group. Uh, we'll post this. The, this video should have been streamed live in the Facebook group, but we'll post it on YouTube. Um, so if you've got any other questions, you can follow up in the discussions there. Uh, so thank you very much, guys. Thank you to you. It was great. Thank you. See you all you. next month. <laughs> Thank you, Rick. Thank you. Thank you, friends. See you next month. See you. Bye. 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 Bye.